Harlem Renaissance was an intellectual, social, and artistic explosion that took place in Harlem, New York, spanning the 1920s. During the time, it was known as a New Negro Movement, named after the 1925 anthology by Elaine Locke. The movement also included the new African American cultural expression across the urban areas in the Northeast and Midwest United States affected by the African American Great Migration, of which Harlem was the largest. The Harlem Renaissance was considered to be a rebirth of African American arts. Though it was centered in the Harlem neighborhood of the borough of Manhattan in New York City, many Francophone black writers from African and Caribbean colonies who lived in Paris were also influenced by the Harlem Renaissance. Aaron Douglas was born May 26, 1899 in Topeka, Kansas, who was an African American painter and graphic artist. Aaron Douglas was a leading figure in the artistic and literary movement known as the Harlem Renaissance. Douglas attended the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. He illustrated Elaine Leroy Locke's book. He contributed illustrations to Opportunity, the National Urban League's magazine, and to the crisis put out by the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, also known as the NAACP. Douglas worked on, on a magazine with novelist Wallace Thurman to feature African American art and literature, entitled Fire. With his reputation for creating compelling graphics, Douglas became an in-demand illustrator for many writers. Some of his most famous illustration projects include his images for James Weldon Johnson's poetic work, God's Trombone, 1927, and Paul Moran's Black Magic, 1929. After receiving a fellowship from the Barnes Foundation in Pennsylvania, he took time to study African and modern art. In 1930, he was hired to create a mural for the library at Fisk University. He started one of his most legendary works, a series of murals entitled Aspects of Negro Life that features four panels, each depicting a different part of the African American experience. Each mural included a captivating mix of Douglas's influences, from jazz music to abstract geometric art. Taking his educational responsibilities quite seriously, he enrolled at Columbia University's Teachers College in 1941 and spent three years earning a master's degree in art education. Continuing to produce new works, Douglas had a number of solo exhibits over the years. In his later years, Douglas received countless honors. In 1963, he was invited by President John F. Kennedy to attend a celebration of the centennial of the Emancipation Proclamation held at the White House. He also earned an honorary doctorate from Fisk University in 1973, seven years after his retirement from the school. Douglas died at the age of 79 on February 2, 1979 in a Nashville hospital. Cloud McKay was born in Nyreen Castle near James Hill in Upper Clarendon Parish, Jamaica. McKay referred to his home village as Sunnyville, a name given to the area by locals. He was the youngest child of Thomas Francis McKay and Hannah Ann Elizabeth Edwards, well-to-do farmers who had enough property to qualify to vote. His parents were also active and well-respected members of the Baptist faith. Thomas was a strict religious man who struggled to develop close relationships with his children due to the serious nature. In contrast, Claude's mother had a warmth that allowed her to give love freely to all of her children. Thomas was of Ashtini descent, while Claude's mother traced her ancestry to Madagascar. Claude re-encountered that his father would have often share stories of Ashtini customs with the family. McKay left for the U.S. in 1912 to attend Tuskegee Institute. McKay was shocked by the intense racism he encountered when he arrived in Charleston, South Carolina, where many public facilities were segregated, which inspired him to write more poetry. At Tuskegee, he disliked the semi-military machine-like existence there and quickly left to study at Kansas State University. At Kansas State, he read W.E.B. Du Bois' Souls of Black Folk, which had a major impact on him and stirred his political involvement. But despite superior academic performance in 1914, McKay decided he did not want to be an agronomist and moved to New York City, where he married his childhood sweetheart. McKay published two poems in 1917 in The Seven Arts under the pseudonym Eli Edwards while working as a waiter on the railways. In 1919, he met Crystal and Max Eastman, who produced The Liberator, where McKay would serve as editor until 1922. It was here, as a co-editor of The Liberator, that he published one of his most famous poems. 
if we nah, must die during the Red Summer. A period of intense racial violence against black people in Anglo-American societies. The poem was reportedly later quoted by Winston Churchill during World War II. If we must die is the poem that makes me a poet among colored Americans. If we must die, let it not be like hogs hunted and penned in an inglorious pot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs, making their mock at our accursed lot. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us, though dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe, Though far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and for their thousand blows deal one death blow. What though before us lies the open grave? Like men, we'll face the murderous cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying but fighting back. Louis Armstrong was born on the year of 1901 and the day of August 4th in New Orleans, Louisiana, in a section that was extremely undefeated in its money system. So, it was nicknamed the battlefield. In Armstrong's childhood, his experience was very rough. His father was a factory worker and suddenly just abandoned the whole family shortly after Armstrong's birth. His mother turned to street walking, frequently leaving him with his maternal grandmother. Armstrong was told to leave fifth grade and began collecting junk and delivering coal. And the Karofskis, a nearby Jewish family, encouraged him to sing and usually invited him into the residence for some courses of food. Armstrong received musical instruction on the cornet and fell in love with music. Armstrong's bold vocal changes of these songs entirely changed the concept of popular singing in American popular music and had lasting effects on all singers who came after him, including Bing Crosby, Billie Holiday, Frank Sinatra, and Ella Fitzgerald. By 1932, Armstrong, who was now known as Satchmo had begun appearing and showing up in movies and made his first tour in England. He was beloved by musicians, but most critics said the most racist and harsh reviews to Armstrong. He remained resilient and did not let any review put him to an end. Otis Boykin was born on August 29, 1920 in Dallas, Texas. He was so inspired by the scientific advances during the Harlem Renaissance that after he graduated from Fisk College in 1941, he continued to self-educate himself. He took a job with the Majestic Radio and TV Corporation, where he served as a supervisor. Later in his life, he worked at PJ Nelson Research Laboratories, and at the same time, he was trying to start up his own business while continuing his education at the Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago. In 1947, he was forced to drop out after only two years of his education because he was not able to avoid the tuition. Otis took interest in working with resistors and began researching and coming up with inventions of his own. On June 16, 1959, he received a patent for a wire precision resistor, which would later be used in radios and television. He created a device that would withstand extreme changes in temperature two years later. 
These devices were cheaper and more reliable than others on the markets, allowing the United States military to use it for missiles and IBM computers. Boykin moved to Paris in 1964, where he created more electronic innovations. His most famous invention was a control unit for the pacemaker. Ironically, Boykin died in Chicago in 1982 due to heart failure. Zorno Herson was born on January 7, 1891, in Alabama. She moved to Harlem in the 1920s during the Harlem Renaissance. Zorno Herson was an important figure during the Harlem Renaissance, despite the fact that it was an era dominated by African American males. In 1921, she published her first story, John Redding Goes to Sea. She became a fiction in the area's art scene while using her apartment, which became a popular spot for social gatherings. She then befriended Langston Hughes and Kelty Cullen, who were also a part of the Harlem Renaissance as well. In late 1924, she published a short story called Drenched in Light in the magazine called Opportunity. February 1927, she collected folklore by traveling to Florida. She received a Bachelor of Anthropology degree from Barnard the same year. Unfortunately, on January 28, 1960, Zora Neale Herson passed away. Not only she thought she could represent African American females in Harlem, she also felt like she could represent every African American female in the world as well. She will always be recognized for her distinctive way of expressing her feelings and connecting the artistic world and African American populations in the country. I have to ride the roads. I'll grab me an armful of train before you know. So make me a pallet on the floor. Take it, buddy! on the floor. Yes, gate make a little old pallet on the floor for me there. Now here's one thing.